I'd like to thank Caden Stadelman and welcome him, uh, otherwise known as CA333, for joining me to provide an insight into the Atomic Dex application and help us all learn about what an RDO is. So welcome. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. For those who don't know who you are, are you able to give us a bit of an understanding and a, uh, a bit of your background and what your position is within the Komodo team? Sure, sure, absolutely. So I've been heading up Komodo for the last couple of years, specifically in terms of tech and tech strategy. Um, my background is pretty much IT, right? The cyber world, that's where I grew up. That's like my my, my super focus. And I, I'd say like I, I keep like a hard focus, like uh, specifically on, on security, cybersecurity, right? Uh, threat mitigations, uh, et cetera, right? Implementing like countermeasures, um, analyzing, you know, threat and, and designing threat models, uh, analyzing like certain like threat uh, surfaces and attack surfaces, et cetera. And I believe like this area is also like what we or basically our whole industry should put the main focus on. If we look at like recent events in the past, then we all understand, right, that security is like the main pillar of like the crypto industry. And yeah, this is like pretty much my background, what I've been doing. And I've been like here with Komodo for the last like six years now. So yeah, yeah exciting awesome. times are ahead and super yeah, happy. Definitely. Thanks for that. So we'll uh, we'll kick off the questions then. The first question that some people may be wondering is what what is Atomic Dex? So in in simple words, okay, I'll try to keep this one like simple and, and as little like technical details as possible. Yeah. But I'd say Atomic Dex is like uh, our and uh, or the third generation cross chain and a cross protocol a DeFi platform or maybe in a short word like third generation DAX. Uh, this is like the third iteration of this technology. We'll, we've been working on this like for quite some time. That's like now over half a decade. And this atomic DAX iteration, I think the, the main benefits and the biggest advantages are that it comes like as a mobile and IoT ready like a protocol and technology framework. So you're able to use this tech which provides like this cross-chain, cross-protocol, -prot like trading capabilities on mobile phones, on 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 any kind of like uh, RM-based device, right? Like Raspberry Pi, uh, Raspberry Pis, and all these IoT devices. I mean, technically, even like my fridge or my smart TV could run Atomic Dex now, and that's like basically. The, the the big big sales argument for me uh, also in terms of like security i mean this is a full like a non-custodial wallet interface right so this tech is decentralized it is trustless it's consisting like of a pure peer-to-peer -peer network and this is atomic dex right in one sentence it enables parties right to to trade freely you know independently and in a trustless fashion that's uh, that's awesome. So I guess to summarize, we've got the cross-chain, cross-protocol, decentralized trading mechanism, as well as a non-custodial uh, multi-coin wallet in there. So you can trade directly from your non-custodial wallet. So you, you own the private keys throughout the, that trading process. Uh, that's that's pretty cool. How does how does Atomic Dex relate back to Komodo then? Um, sorry, can we repeat that question? Yeah, yeah. So how does how does Atomic Dex relate back to Komodo? So, um, okay. So um, yeah, I, I I'd say that Atomic Dex does like kind of represent right and project like our vision of ultimate freedom of ultimate financial freedom, right? And uh, I'm certain it does provide the technical means for such uh, ultimate liberty in terms of like. Uh, you know, from the financial world and etc. Um, Atomic Dex. I mean, we all know, like, since it's like decentralized, it's trustless, it's non-custodial. It means it doesn't discriminate anyone, right? It doesn't limit like network access, right? I mean, it's open source, it's freely available, it's permissionless. Like anyone can join it, anyone can use it. It's free. So the tech itself and you know taking these uh, factors like in, in in consideration means that atomic dex does indeed stand for freedom and we like komodo we stand for freedom right so that's like the main value we all identify with and i i'd say that's also how atomic dex relates to komodo 
Yeah, that's awesome. That yeah, no, that definitely does. I guess it's a very philosophical uh, way to answer the question. And I appreciate that. Um, and moving on to the actual how to then. So how does how does Atomic Dex work? What what is the back end? And then simply how does it work for people that want to to actually use it? Okay. So the non-custodial wallet part, right? So I always look at Atomic Dex with, with like kind of two layers, right? We do have like the Dex layer, that part which handles like the trading, right? This cross-chain and cross-protocol like DeFi stack. And then we have like the wallet interface, the wallet API, basically the non-custodial multi-coin wallet part, right? So um, they both utilize state-of-the-art technology, right? They use native blockchain connections. So Atomic Dex does indeed like communicate with the blockchains that it does support, right? And that's like a huge list of different second and third generation protocols. And from a Dex perspective, it does use a so-called HTLC tag that's like hash time locked contract technology. And if I had like to explain you that in, in, in kind of like basic terms, right? Not non-technical terms so that anyone understand it. It's basically a special type of transaction, right? Which enables you to add like conditions, right? So certain conditions have to be met in order for a transaction to become actually spendable, right? So um, in, in further terms, right? If we like explain how an atomic swap works, right? Then HTLC is the answer for various second and third generation protocols. Atomic Dex does also use smart contracts, actually, which kind of like cover uh, this HTLC functionality or basically sort of like a mirror that technology like over to like a smart contract based protocol such as like Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, because they don't have like certain elements of like uh, UTXO based uh, protocols or coins such as like Bitcoin, Litecoin, right? So this is how we basically solved it to also like provide this like wide like ecosystem support and compatibility in terms of supported uh, tokens and coins, right? I mean, it's it's a huge list. It's like 99% of all coins and tokens listed on coin market cap are supported by Atomic Dex, right? And it is because we do use this like low level native core crypto technology, such as these hash time locked contracts hash time and uh, a hash lock and time lock what does it mean so time lock for example is if you'd like basically add the timestamp to a transaction and that will basically say don't allow the recipient to spend it before this time is reached right a hash lock on the other hand means before you're able to spend you know this transaction a certain data needs to be published on the blockchain right that's like the underlying basis for this like conditional like uh, uh, cross-chain atomic swap right when i trade with you when let, let, let's take an example let's say i try like to swap you know like a komodo for like a total um what, what will happen is basically when you send me the, the token, right? Let's say like I'm the maker or, and, and you're the taker. Let's say you're the maker, I'm the taker. Let's say you provide actually like the liquidity to the network and I'll just like take it. I'll buy the token from the network, right? So what will happen is basically that the network, the blockchain network knows like on a protocol level that once, you know, like uh, I, you know, receive the coins from you, I'll not be able to spend them before I pay you. And vice versa, right? This goes, this is a both direction, you know, path. This is like a mutual agreement on the blockchain. Um, you also won't be able to spend, you know, like my payment unless I actually have the proof that I received the token that I paid for, right? So this is like how this like technology like works. And I think like the most, the most exciting aspect, you know, in, in this technology stack, it's, it's specifically in terms of security is that this prevents scams, right? This prevents, you know, someone, you know, not holding up like to the agreement and trying, you know, like to scam you, et cetera. This is something that's like precluded with blockchain technology based like cross-chain atomic swaps, right? I mean, there are certain attacks still possible, but it would be like very costly. In most cases, it wouldn't pay off. It would turn it like non-lucrative for the attacker. So, uh, this is like how how atomic dex works and and basically the underlying technology yeah that was awesome that was a, a 
an awesome deep dive into to how it works. So I guess from uh, the overview, you've got the, the two massive features. You've got the ability to not only hold 99% of uh, coins in existence, but you also have the ability to trade it in that non-custodial, like trustless fashion using this HTLC uh, tech, as, as you mentioned. So just on that, exactly. um, you said these set conditions must be met in, in order to enable the transactions to be spendable. So what happens if those conditions aren't met, say during during a trade, somebody um, doesn't send the coins? What what occurs at that point? Okay, so what happens then is there is like a time uh, limit, right? There is a so-called timeout. And if after, you know, certain time, if after, you know, a few hours, such uh you know such a trade is is not like completed and one of the parties you know doesn't like hold up to the promise the the network will just like automatically refund you know the the coins to the party that uh, basically did the first part of the transaction now awesome. in, in this case yeah in, in this case it's basically you never lost actually control over your funds right they, just like on the UI level, it looks like they're locked and you can't spend them now. And they indeed are, right? But they are locked, right? They are locked by the means of these like HTLCs. So no one can really like scam you. And after that timeout, you know, is reached, your coins will just like be back on your on your wallet. In and your if you wallet. did it like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, exactly. You'll have them back, right? You can, it's like a manual process, but you own the private key. You basically sign the transaction and you have them back, but it's like automated on GUI level. So it's like super smooth experience. Yes. Yeah, that's uh, that's great to know. That's, um, you know, I've, I've definitely learned something there. So I appreciate that. Um, and with, with that understanding of how Atomic Dex works and the different, you know, the different things people can do on Atomic Dex, can you explain uh, what an uh, initial Dex offering is? So an IDO, what is an IDO? And then also how Atomic Dex facilitates IDOs? Sure, sure. So IDO, I actually always like, when someone asks me like, what's an IDO? I just like say, look, it's basically a D-ICO. It's like an ICO, but adding the D means making it like decentralized, trustless, you know, permissionless, conducting it through a DeFi or DEX technology stack, right? Um, in, in our, you know, specific case, uh, it means that the DEX network, right, will be the place where, you know, the, so the IDO token or coin is being offered to the investors. So the investors, would basically buy the IDO token or coin through the DEX network, right? So the IDO provider or holder will simply just like put up a market listing and the investors will just like buy them. So it's just like a usual maker taker, you know, a, a trading schematic, like in a usual like DEX trade. However, in, in this specific case, you usually have like one big order, right? There won't be like a huge, you know, spread order big, Normally, unless someone buys an IDO token and tries to sell it cheaper afterwards, but we all know we shouldn't like you know uh, buy high and sell low. We should do it like the other way around to make profit. So that's something that's usually like precluded as a risk. So you usually have like one big order um, by the IDO provider, and that market listing is basically the the IDO on the the open order exactly. book and, and you kind of you hinted at it there that uh that people will still be able to trade so they could actually in fact purchase from the idea and then undercut the idea in a, in a sense but losing losing money during the process so people are still able to freely trade during that that process how do you think that yes. would affect the outcome of ideos on atomic decks do you think it would have a, a negative or a positive or a neutral effect i think it has a very positive effect because it uh, highlights it it literally underlines, you know, this the liberty, you know, aspect we discussed earlier, right? No one has control over what's happening on a DEX network. And so no one has also control like during an IDO, right? I mean, it is expected, but that's just like our expectation according to common sense and logical user and investor's behavior that if someone, you know, like as an investor participates in an IDO and he buys the token, he won't sell it cheaper, right? Uh, yeah. Right after even like during the IDO. So, and if that party did, I mean, it's something super exciting actually, right? I mean, imagine there's an IDO going on. 
people like investors, like IDO hunters will be waiting for these parties, putting up cheaper orders because that means Insta profit. <laughs> so um, I, I even think it wouldn't be something bad if someone tried that, right? But like from a tech perspective, um, I think it's like something like super exciting using a DEX DeFi network for such like an initial like a pr product or like a car in a token offering. Um, because it does use like this, this tax technology. It, it, it means this is like permissionless, right? As of today, if, if you try to participate in an IPO and et cetera, I mean, certain, uh, you know, members of certain states, uh, certain humans, et cetera, aren't allowed, right? Because there's like some legislation, some jurisdictions say no to them, right? And a, an IDO, a DEX network, it's a technology that's not regulatable, right? We don't have any power over it. It's like the web. It's like the web. It's like the World Wide Web. It's like the internet itself. You can, pro like the internet providers, the ISPs, the DNS providers. I mean, they have this all up and running and provide the infrastructure, but at the end of the day, they do not really like control what's going online. They can only retrospectively ban something, close something, you know, censor something. But, you know, putting it initially up, et cetera, it's not regulated, right? I mean, that's something that's probably coming. But with a DAX network, I think this is like the, the, the most exciting aspect of it, like of the IDO itself and that it's using a DAX is this extreme level of liberty and freedom. So that brings us back like to the, to the freedom uh, aspect of earlier. Yeah, definitely. No, that was a great answer there. And then my final question is how do how do Atomic Dex audios differ from the likes of audios that are conducted on on uh, Uni Pancake or Sushi Swap? Okay, so with with Sushi Swap, Uni Swap, you know, on all all these so-called AMMs, right? I mean, there have been like really super interesting analyzes, and I won't go too deep into it, but just like on on we we'll scratch a bit on the surface is that, and that's that might be a bit political, but these protocols operate in, in, in a Ponzi scheme, right? Um, that's something that's been undisclosed. That's something that's known now. And besides that, so basically one of the like uh, core, you know, uh, schematics of uh, this protocol functionality is already like negative in my opinion. But then we also have like to, to, to look at the aspect of interoperability, right? These uh, automated like market making and automated liquidity protocols, they, I think the biggest negative in, in, in terms of like tech from my perspective is besides like the security issues we've seen in, in just very recently is that they operate in a closed ecosystem, right? They provide uh, support and, uh, you know, protocol compatibility with a very limited range of coins or, or not even coins, uh, tokens actually, right? That look, Uniswap, for example, uh, would mean like it's ERC-20. It's limited to this like ecosystem. Um, you're bind by the crazy transaction fees. Uh, you're limited by the number of coins that, or, or the number of, of, of uh, cryptocurrencies that you could actually use in this ecosystem. And on the other hand, Atomic DAX, uh, first of all, it's, you know, the tech itself, doesn't operate like an AMM or an uh, ALP. Um, it is interoperable with a wide variety of second and third generation uh, protocols. And that does actually also include ERC-20, BP-20, SLP, and so on. And we have like a list of like other coins that are coming. Our DEX team right now is working on Lightning network support, right? Means like enabling users at a certain point of time to trade through a land means reducing time and cost of a transaction or a trade to an absolute minimum, right? These are all benefits which you won't have on Uniswap. You won't have on, on Sushi and Cream and whatever like other like uh, uh, platforms are up, right? So if you're like a Bitcoin OG and you have only Bitcoins, you are not able to participate in such an IEO. You'll be discriminated just because you don't hold any ERCs or BEPs. Awesome. That was, uh, that was an absolutely fantastic answer. We'll, uh, we'll call it there, but just to highlight for everyone, Atomic Dex has two massive features. You can, you can not only hold, but you can also trade 99% of, of the coins that are out there in that non-custodial trustless fashion. There's some awesome tech behind it. I uh, appreciate you coming on to, to explain that to us. So thanks for your time. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, I'm super excited and, and can't wait for the, for the total IDO. Thank you, Nutella.
appreciate it.